Today we are going to make a landscape painting and it's going to look great. In this video I'll be using Daler Rowney Aquafine watercolors. What I think is most important when we're doing something like a simple landscape painting is to get the most out of it by using high chromatic colors and complementing them with low chromatic colors or grays. So brilliant colors versus grays. Now this image that we're going to use comes from just right outside my house. This is in southern Utah. And when you get these storms coming, it's just the drama's high. We get these puddles, these reflections. We got the mesas. I mean, it's just really neat. So what I want to focus on is, is really showing this wash between the mesa on down, the sky, and then pulling this, these earth tones right over the top. The first thing that I always think about is getting the sky laid in. And so let's go ahead and put in some, some cobalt blue for starters. And I'm just going to wash that in. And it's the nice thing about watercolors is they're so forgiving. And the way I paint, if, if something doesn't pan out exactly like I want it, I fix it. So lower on this sky transition, I'm just going to put in this cerulean blue. Skies tend to be pure blue on the lower horizon. Some people would call it a, a warm blue, but the ultramarines and the cobalts work much nicer on the higher up colors and then the warmer blues on the horizon edge. Okay, so let's just establish this horizon line and this, this is going to be one of the more important parts. So let's go ahead and highlight these, these cat oranges and I just love, love the strength of this color and sometimes I just love to put the, the tubes of just wet paint, fresh paint. Um, a lot of times when you spray it down, you get a minimal amount of paint. In this situation, I need a lot of strong, strong paint. So let's go ahead and, and just really let it be strong. Let the strength of this, the pigments and these colors really, really show in this middle section. So at this point, I see I have a hard edge here and a hard edge here. I want to be careful about those. So what I'm going to do is just quickly touch it with a new bead of water and then down here as well. So I'm letting this come into here and while that's going, you know, I'm just going to bring in these two blues and finish out my wash down here. So I want all my orange out. And as I bring the blues up, they will be able to mix as complementary colors on that orange. I kind of want these same principles of sky. I want, you know, the warm blue where the warm blue was, and I want this ultramarine blue where the ultramarine blue was. And I think we are set on that. So now let's bring those two together and let's let those edges start to separate. A little bit much there. And feel free to gently bring up where you have too much water. When you have too much water, you start to get this claw look to your watercolors, which isn't a problem as long as you're intending on having that. But for me, not only do I not want the claw look, I want a really smooth gradation here. And I don't want the gradation to say, you know, this is clearly the mesa and this is clearly the sky. I want this to be a nice transition. Now, one thing I got to think about is this edge is ready. So let's, when I have a hard edge, I can come in beforehand and just put a little bit of water. Let's play with, with some clouds. So over here, I'm going to mix just a, just an open area. And I really, really like this lamp black and it's a bit warm. And so what I can do is compare it with a Payne's Gray. Yeah, this is nice. And like I say, it's not a heavy, heavy water wash, but I'm starting to see down in here, I start to get a little more buildup of, of where the pigment is wanting to travel to, but I can, I can control that and add little, 
dips and rises. And then as it starts to dry too, what I can do is just gently add. See how that, see how that just lost that edge. I'm still thinking I want a little more blue in one of these clouds. So I'm gonna go with my ultramarine and I'm gonna mix it in. And I'm going to see what happens when I bring it right to this edge and make it feel like there's a slightly cooler cloud that's coming up right behind the mesa. And that's the fun thing about watercolors is we can, we can just experiment. You know, we can soften an edge. You know, if I'm starting to say, okay, you know, it's a bit strong, then I can come in here and, you know, a little bit wet, but I can just break up these edges. So then my focus is more on the mesa. All right, so let's go ahead and start on the mesa. I'm just gonna get an ultramarine and I want it thicker. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of purple so it doesn't feel like sky. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna start by placing in one of these canyons, at least the shadow of the canyon. What I've done is let this dry to this point. And these, these, these really dark areas, I needed them to dry because now I want to add the third layer, which is a little less water, not quite, you know, thick, but there's gonna be an opaque fill and I just want to put in, you know, some, some, some sage, maybe a little bit of this road, maybe add a couple dark spots, but it's just these finishing touches to get a really nice fill. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And I like titanium white for this. Chinese white is much more translucent. It's not as powerful. Um, and where I'm not quite certain how strong this is going to be, what I end up doing is just, you know, kind of over to the side, just put a little something. And, let, and let's come over here to the right, and what I'll do is just put a little area and just see, see if I agree to the direction that's going. And it feels really gray, so I might add some of this sienna. And that's kind of interesting. And the other thing is I like this road. So I just wanted to add quickly just kind of the fill of this this road kind of going over the horizon. Okay, so that's good there. I want a couple little darks in here just to show where these truck tires have been driving through the mud. And that's good. Just a little more texture. Then over here, I want to add a couple, you know, little sage bushes here. And that's the beautiful thing about these paintings is is you can make a really powerful painting. You just gotta think about your steps. You know, you gotta strategize. You gotta say, let's establish the wash, let's build up the foreground, and then let's let's just do these last, you know, kind of cutesy finishing stages. And this is this is where you can take as long as you want at home, but for this, we just want to just show our directionality and kind of how we're strategizing on some of these ideas. And really for what we're trying to accomplish today, I think this sums it up. Thanks for watching.